The next one says to use a pivot query. Now a pivot query is a special way to be able to take something that we have information in the rows, but we want to transpose it so that information becomes the columns. So the first step in a pivot query is to get the information that you need, and this often is this often uses a derived table. So the things that we need are how many employees, that's going to be a count. It's often very common that a pivot table use one of the aggregation functions. And in this case, we'll be using the count aggregation. But we need to know the hire for each month and each year. So let's go see if we can find that hire information. When we think of hiring, we think of employees. So up here in the human resources, we look at employees. And sure enough, there's a hire date in human resources. So from the hire date, we can get that month and that year. So let's select that. We're going to get the month from the hire date. And we want to get the year from the hire date. And let's go ahead and give each of these a column label, as we'll call this the month. And we'll call this one the year. So we're going to get the month and the year. Where are we going to get that from? Human resources dot employee and let's run that and see if that gives us the information that we want so it does give us all the months and the years and now what we want to have is we want the columns to be the months 1 through 12 and the rows as the year so we've got row we've got the year already in rows and the months we have in rows and we want to transpose it so that the month is across the columns and that the years are down the, down the rows. So, so to do that, we need to transpose it. And this is, but this is our table, so we'll use this derived table as our source for the information that we need because we don't want any extra information here. We just want what we need. Remember when we use a derived table that you have to give it a, a, an alias. I'm just going to do it D for date. So there's our drive table and we're going to select everything from that. It has the information we need so I'm going to simply say select everything from this table and this then becomes the beginning of our from statement. So our from statement consists of the table with the alias and pivot. So next we put pivot and pivot requires two arguments. The first argument is which column do we want to pivot on? And we remember we it's the months we want across the top. So we're really going to pivot on the month column in that table, but more specifically we want it to be the count of this. So we're going to use the month table and actually get a count of it. So we use that column and the aggregate function that we want to use. And then the keyword for, and here we're going to list our columns, our, what our possible uh, column labels can be. So for month in, and here's what our options are for month. And we're going to have one, two, three, these are the values for those months, right? Okay, so those are our values for those column headers, but we need to surround each one by the square brackets. So I'm going to put an opening and a square bracket again around each column label. So these are going to, it's going to take every time it gets a four for the value of month, it's going to put it in that column. And these will be the list of columns that we have. And then I can close the pivot because it has the two arguments. It says which column it's going to pivot on and an aggregation function if it's needed. And then for 
the column in and it lists the possible values that we're going to be using in this table. Now the pivot table also needs to have an alias and I'm going to count this C as count. Alright, so now let's run it and see what we get. And there we go. Notice that we got columns 1 through 12. That's what we specified here. In those columns are the value of count month. And notice what it did with year. So year was our other value that we got from that. And it organized it by year in the rows. And that's how pivot queries work.